Well, here we are back on this little car. This time we're actually uh, giving a little bit of a helpful hint out there. I wasn't really able to find too many videos on the uh, 57. And so um, the best way to go about it is kind of helping out and doing it my own. So to really get to this spot where you're going to be able to have your drum off of the car so you can re repair or re pretty much replace the upper ball joint and the lower what you really are going to have to do is you have to bear with me now I'm just going to kind of use this as a template with it on the ground but you know I'll kind of help guide you through it a little bit um, to release the uh, outer tie rod you're going to have a, uh, a castle nut on it which is going to go right here on the back of the uh, drum well I like to flip it over and I like to screw it back on as best as I can you can put a pickle fork in between but realistically it's not really going to help this is where it would be over here and so since it's coming underneath of it you would be kind of trying to pry it but realistically it's uh, not really going to help so I just took the hammer and I pounded it onto it so in other words you'd be pounding right here this would be coming up your tie rod would be coming right up through the bottom of the shackle and I would just pound on it until it pops it loose and then once you got that loose go ahead and put that off to the side since I'm replacing my whole outer tie rod as well as the inner tie rod I really wasn't worried, worried too much about it because you can damage these threads that's why I put the uh, cast nut on it but that's that was easier to uh, take care of so anyways getting back to the upper uh, ball joint as well as the lower um, on this 57 I know that um, it is riveted and so um, there's some pretty tough rivets actually and so the kit that I have it tells me to um, make the holes 3 8 so I took um, and pretty much drilled it out with 3 8 now you can do it pretty much to the thickness of the base of your ball joint and then once you get to your upper control arm you can still continue to drill but since you're gonna have rivets in here it's best to just take a punch and punch them out while while the you know the shackles still installed so in other words it would be like this is gonna be here with the A arm right there or the control arm right there and while this is sitting here up on here it's best to just drill down to that thickness and then take a punch and just punch it right out it's really not too difficult but it is a little bit of time consuming and I'm talking like a little while uh, they're in there pretty tough obviously they've been in there for a long time um, and then underneath you're gonna have a stop plate so you got this stop plate Let's see if I can put that up here so the stop plate will be down there as well as a boot so when you try and separate this from the shackle and you're using your pickle fork you're pretty much going to be prying it underneath this seal trying to pry it off so in other words trying to separate it and then once once you think you can get a good ample amount on it also I would try and lift up on the upper ball joint at the same time while you're pounding it. it's going to take a little bit of uh, pressure it's going to take a little bit of um, time as well and uh, we all know how much we don't have so anyways uh, as well as the uh, lower ball joint though this is in place it's held in place by six bolts um, so you've got two coming from the inside out so in other words it'd be like the bottom out and then as well as the other side but these four right here are all from the bottom up but trying to get the ball joint to come down is kind of a pain as well because again the bolts coming out of the lower control arm like that and so it's kind of held in place you can kind of see how it's going to be held in place and you're not going to be able to drop these and there's no room underneath unless you can get that seal off which is kind of a pain in the ass but uh, what I did was I just held it in place with a vice grips and I cut it halfway so that way I could just push it back in through and that way I could get it inside there so I could drop it and that way I can get the uh, lower control or the, uh, the drum brake off and then uh, next what you'll have to do obviously is you know if you're gonna go continue more is you're gonna take off your upper uh, control arm as, as well as your lower but make sure you get some spr spring compressor uh, what I had to do was 
pretty much lower this as much as I could. And lowering it, I mean, I undid this, the, the bolts. I think these are, um, what are those, 9, 16? Well, mine were 16 mil. Mine were 16 mil, that's how I was able to get them off. But anyways, um, yeah, just be careful when you're lowering it. Just enough to be able to reach into the spring and be able to put some fingers on it. What I did to my spring was like this. This is how I was able to compress mine. Now I did this from, obviously, the uh, passenger side. So while I was up inside there, I was able to just barely get enough on it. So that way the shaft didn't get up in the way. Uh, and I just compressed these uh, five spring portions, at least enough to be able to pull that lower uh, control arm off. So just be very careful. Again, these springs can kill people. And, uh, you know, be careful. Um, yeah, so this is what you'll get at the end result. And I get my bolts hanging down. So hopefully this helps out a little bit. You know, I'm not a uh, professional, but uh, at the same time, make sure you have a little bit of mechanical knowledge before you uh, attempt this. Good luck. Again, here we are back on this little car.